let's talk about the future of Star Wars games going forward now that it's open for everyone. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. <laughs> First it's off, pretty exciting times. It is. What what were your thoughts? I know it was so funny cuz you're in Australia. Everyone freaked out cuz it was launched like I think it was like 7 a.m. PS PST and then you wake up on your normal bedtime cuz you're a good boy and <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, loved I loved like all the reactions to your tweet. Off. Oh really? Well, I don't even remember what, what was I tweeting. What was I talking about? Uh, you you had, uh, tweeted about the news, and then everyone was like, "Oh hey, good morning." <laughs> Andrew's oh, away. that's right. Yeah, Andrew's what? Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, it was it's crazy. Usually, every all the news that happens happens overnight, and I, like I know a bunch of some other Australian YouTubers who like you know have readjusted their schedule mm -hmm. to literally be awake during the American hours which I'm never gonna do because you know I actually like the Sun but, uh, <laughs> it's so uh, yeah it's pretty wild the amount of stuff that got dropped within the space of a few weeks like it feels like just yesterday that they announced all the new TV shows coming to Disney Plus and the film and everything else. And then suddenly everyone's like, I mean, everyone saw it coming though. I mean, everyone's mm -hmm. like, all right, they're announcing like 10 new shows. Surely there's going to be some games. Um, there's got to be something. I tweeted in my fleet. So I was like, okay, EA, it's your move. You got you, Disney <laughs> just checkmated. Come on. So true. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I didn't see the Lucasfilm Games thing coming. I've known about mm -hmm. Lucasfilm Games for a while. I mean, they've been around ever since, you know. Yeah. Officially ever since the 80s. But like the modern version of them that doesn't make games, that just works as a licensor, they've been around ever since Disney took over the license. So, exactly. like, I've known about them in the background. And they're in the credits for all the games as well. That, you know, they work with EA and mm -hmm. whoever else is making the games. But, um, I didn't see them coming out as the brand new face of, you know, Star Wars gaming and Lucasfilm gaming in general. The timeline was so crazy. So we got the announcement of Lucasfilm games and they're like, oh, what does this mean EA is losing the license? Then the next day we got, oh, Indiana Jones game. They're not losing the license. They're making an Indiana Jones game. Then the third day, oh my gosh, they're losing the license. What are we going to do? <laughs> Well, I wouldn't say they're like losing it. It's more just like being shared yeah, now, I guess. The, I think that's like the misconception. The yeah. Which to me, like, yeah, it is what everyone wanted to mm -hmm. happen, I think. I think, you know, with the Star Wars games they made, even though, you know, compared to the golden era in 2005, the mid-2000s, even though the last few years have been kind of scarce for Star Wars games, I guess you'd say there's only been four major releases in the past seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. It's still each release has improved upon the last in a way and oh, definitely. you know battlefront 2 had the incredible redemption story and now is insanely popular with it being <laughs> free on on epic game store mm -hmm. fallen order like i don't know anyone who doesn't like that game it, it was great it's you know, so loved solid it. yeah squadrons is also pretty tight in that it appeals to a very specific audience but mm -hmm. um yeah is a is a good game in itself that is something we haven't really seen in about 20 years since the yeah. original flight sims so i think they're you know they're taking good steps forward and based on fallen order and squadrons release like and the double down comment everyone the notorious now double down comment saying they're, they're mm -hmm. going to make more and more star wars games in the next few years like i just want to see them fulfill that promise because um there's so much potential there and you know they have incredible studios at their disposal incredible developers who work at ea so um yeah i'm looking forward to what whatever's announced next as soon as the lucasfilm games was announced i was like okay it's time to start i had been thinking about what kind of videos i wanted to make and i was like okay let's, let's just start doing this um <laughs> i made the video talking about my 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 thoughts on it the next day they announced that EA was losing the exclusivity in that video. I was like, the best case scenario is when it comes time to renew the license, instead of renewing it exclusively with EA, they actually open up the whole thing and other games can make Star, other, uh, other game developers can make Star Wars games, but EA can also continue to make Star Wars games because while there was some struggles with Battlefront 2015, with it not being as wide of a scope as people wanted, and then the whole controversy with Battlefront 2, I love those games. They 
all redeem, redeemed themselves and then de did even better. Fallen Order, everyone loves the game. Squadrons, while it's very niche, it serves an audience that's very strong, very uh, community focused. And now that we've got private matches, it's sprouted up a whole esports scene that has never been the case in Star Wars games. Yeah, again, like I'm happy that it wasn't taken away from EA because then I think that would have caused other issues. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, some people wouldn't have been happy then, and I think they're just trying to basically satisfy all Star Wars fans. Disney have had, what, Star Wars for eight, nine years now, since 2012. Yep. And I think after, you know, whatever happened with the sequel movies, I think they've gotten <laughs> a few things right along the way. Rogue One, everyone pretty much loved. Oh, um, so good. Solo even has, you know, a lot of people actually, even though it wasn't, as hyped as some of the other ones it didn't do as well at the box office and everything i think people like it it's aged well people have oh, come definitely. around to that movie we stand here amidst my achievement not yours and um you know it's going to be a new era for both star wars and star wars gaming in general and yeah, I'm really happy like EA are sticking around, but also happy that other publishers get the chance to work with the Star Wars license. That said, I've seen a lot of, um, I don't know, I think everyone's been asking for an open world Star Wars game for, you know, forever, literally forever. Yeah. There's no other proper open world Star Wars game apart from Star Wars Galaxy, which is more of an MMO anyway. Mm -hmm. But the fact that everyone's been asking for this forever and now it's been announced that ubisoft are making the open world star wars game everyone's like complaining again saying oh i didn't want a ubisoft open world star wars <laughs> game because i guess they have a certain style of open world games that in the past have had issues or you know some people don't always enjoy as much and i know the division games did have their own problems i've never played them but i've heard that they're very good you know strong mm -hmm. games and they had a similar arc to battlefront 2 and they launched a little bit shaky and then kind of the developers updated them and recovered the audience um and obviously you know we have a long history of assassin's creed games which aren't made by the studio exactly what's what's the name what's the name of the studio again yeah i think everyone was just like oh i basically want gta star wars that's it like let's make rockstar <laughs> make it or something which you know let's be real was never gonna happen yeah <laughs> Um, they're too busy on their their big pile of cash, keeping on <laughs> pumping out got a GTA Five. A GTA um, Five never ending game. Never ending. It's just a a cash printing machine at this point. I, I'm glad that you brought up that point of kind of the you you got the the two sides. You've got people very happy that it's open world game, and then you have other people that are happy that it's open world game, but see it's from Ubisoft and think, oh my gosh, Assassin's Creed, you're gonna get onto one of a building jump all the way down as a Star Wars character and use the force to cushion your fall. That's not the case. Like you said, uh, it's the development team that did the Division series. Um, while they have worked on a couple of the open world games, it's not really their huge expertise. So I'm excited to see what they bring to the genre coming from a multiplayer game. Maybe they do make a, a multiplayer game, but it's open world. I, I think that's pretty likely with what we've seen so far, but uh, they're also working on the Avatar game, so we'll see. That's so true. Yeah, I, yeah, it's going to be interesting because, like, especially considering, like, let's have a think about what they're actually going to be making the story about and who's the character going to be. Because I really don't think it's going to be a Jedi or a Force-using mm -hmm. character because it doesn't make sense to have a character like that. Let's say it's like a highly populated open world with lots of AI characters or even online multiplayer, right? It's it's unlikely that you're going to have a character swinging around a lightsaber in a world like that. Yeah. You know, the Jedi <laughs> are kind of more reserved characters who only use their lightsaber when they need to. They're not going to be waving in the faces of, you know, general civilians. Do you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. and coming from the background, this studio has developed the Division games, which are third-person shooters. Yeah. Um, perhaps, you know, maybe this is the Bounty Hunter game. Maybe it's the Boba Fett game. Maybe oh, it's something dude. completely new. Who knows? But uh, yeah, <laughs> a lot of hopes and dreams. Bounty Hunters. I'm with you, though. I hope that it's... I hope that it is not a force wielder game. I don't know 
I don't pr particularly want to see that story in a new spinoff like that. I'd like to see mm. more of boots on the ground kind of type of open world game. Um, more of like a genuine Star Wars experience rather than you have the power of the universe and it is in your goals to change it. It's like, no, I want to see something smaller scale. I want to go yeah, shopping sure. in Coruscant. <laughs> Yeah, man, that'd be epic. Far out. And yeah, that's the other thing. There's only a, a small handful of worlds I can see them building an open world game on without it becoming too repetitive. Mm -hmm. So, or like samey. Do you know what I mean? Like every yeah. Star Wars world kind of has only one environment, right? Like Hoth yeah. is a nice snow planet, basically Tatooine's a desert mm -hmm. planet. Um, that said, I think, yeah, it's between Tatooine and Coruscant, in yeah. my opinion, just because those, both those planets have so many potential locations. Tatooine with the different towns, you can you know, go between Mos Espa and Mos Eisley and everywhere else, They're out in the desert, discovering things. And then Coruscant is like a city, which would go hand in hand with what um, they've done with the Division games, which are both based in uh, New York and Washington. So, yeah, yeah, a few ideas there. Definitely, and I hope, please, <laughs> I'm so tired of sand. <laughs> I'm so tired of sand, <laughs> unless exactly. it's Tatooine. Don't make a new sand planet, or I'm gonna go how many, crazy. Yeah, how many sand planets are there in Battlefront? Like, I think it's it's played. We need cities. Let's yep. get let's get into some mod modernity and actual, you know, civilization. Exactly. Sweet. I look forward to the future of Star Wars games again. Thank you so much for hopping on. It's me too. Be good. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Goodness gracious. <laughs>